Oh, that's a good wrench. Okay. <laughs> oh, there you go, boy. Oh, he hit my leg. Hey, bro. Hey, don't go between my legs. Switch it up here to this 6.9 moderate fast medium light rod. I got a, a loop knot tied to 20 pounds of mono with uh, an Alberto knot, and I got a salty head 3/16 wicked jig head in the TJ purple. I'm throwing this UV root beer, really nice color, that real cool copper flake in there, and uh, I got that with my Lose custom light. And the suffix 832 braid oh i just spooked one jacob you see him so we're really trying to key in with our polarized lenses like these little sand pockets and stuff so wherever you see that darker area that's going to be your grass and um, that lighter area is going to be your sand pockets and you usually want to key into like this muddier bottom because that's where um, the warmer temperature is going to be so if you have like a really bright sandy bottom that's going to be cooler versus your muddy dark bottom that's going to be a lot warmer and that's what these fish are wanting because this water temp is probably 68 or 70 degrees today oh right there right there right there you see the wake there was one a little bit right of that too right in there see some floating grass and that's where we've seen some wakes, some uh, fish swimming around. Uh, but they really don't want to eat right now. There's, it's like a really high pressure. So whenever it's a really high pressure, it's like having a headache. So do you want to eat when you're not feeling well and having a headache? No. So that's kind of the same thing with these fish. They don't really want to bite, but we'll see if we can. So kind of a lot of pressure on you as a fisherman to find them and throw the lure right in front of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh polarized lenses on the camera guys so you can see there's Jacob right there what's up Jacob and you guys can actually see this grass here so you have your sand pockets and then you have your grass and you got to think of that as structure and that's what fish are going to cling to they're not just uh, swimming around here aimlessly um, they're looking at the change so if you were a predator you'd want to be in the grass or around the grass because that's where the bait's going to be clinging to and you could ambush that prey so when we're walking around here the polarized lenses really help us out to see and key in on these little spots here really we want the wind to pick up a little bit more because as a wade fisherman it's kind of tough to sneak up on these guys if the water is like super calm and whatnot but threw it and he turned and checked it out and then he left see there's like a little sand pocket here and a lot of times what i like to do is throw it in there let it sit pop and if there's any fish in that surrounding grass all around there they might come out and just check it out and see what's going on it doesn't always work but sometimes it works and every cast has meaning i'm trying to cast it to these sand pockets or the edge of these grass lines but if you were to get on google maps and check out an area and if you see a place where there's a lot of grass fingers and grass lines maybe you key in on those funnels oh one just took off right there jacob going towards you so exactly how i was talking right there guys there was one right up here in these little sand pockets and I just saw the wake, I saw the V. So whenever you see that V on the water, that's either a red or a trout taking off.
All right, update. Saw a lot of wakes. Threw out a lot of stuff. Nothing on the stringer yet. That's okay. We're gonna try and move to another spot. But, seen a lot of good signs. It's just maybe they're not feeding yet. Or the high pressure, I don't know. We were throwing at some fish and they would either turn away and say, disgusting, or they would look at it and be like, nah, I'm good. So we're gonna keep moving. Hopefully the minor kicks up here in a bit and we can catch a few. So you guys stay tuned. We're gonna catch some fish for y'all guys, I promise. I think, hopefully. Man, I really want to catch a red on this blank. There's one. As soon as I spit it. Too. Oh, that's a good red. Okay. <laughs> oh, there you go, boy. All right, guys. I was just talking about hooking up with this rod. That Jacob let me borrow, and then here we go. Got this red, a nice red too. Let's go. Finally. Shout out to Victor Ramos for letting me have this Cronarch, take it off his hands, putting it to good use. Just put this line on, so if it messes up, it's AJ's fault. I'm recording. Yeah. Ooh, look at that pink colada right in the mouth. Right in the corner of the mouth. Ooh, nice red too. There we go. All right, man, he's gotta be what? 32, 17 pounds. I think 22, 23. Pink Colada with the Salty Head 3 16 And let me see what he is on the Bogas. He's right at four pounds. So healthy fish, nice fish. This huge thanks to Stinky Pants for this awesome custom stringer. Supporter of the channel, if you guys Want to save 10% on sticky pants? Go check out the website and use the code. Well, that sucks. Huh. All right, there we go. Dude, that was awesome. No, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, he hit my leg. Hey, bro. Hey, don't go between my legs. <laughs> don't go between my legs, dude. <laughs> hey. He's tiny. He's gonna be small. He's gonna be too small. Yeah, man, pretty fish. I just like, I was watching my lure and then all of a sudden I just see it like taken over by a silhouette. Yeah. Come here, my guy. Come here, my guy. I'm anti, anti-nets. 
Yeah. You think so? Here's another one, guys. On the pink. Pretty fish, man. Ooh, look at that tail. So, fun fact about reds, guys. The reason why when you take them out of the water and they curl their tail is because it's a different temperature than they're used to. So they get a little cold. <laughs> so that's why they crimp up like that. Another pink colada with the salty head. Maybe we could take him to the boat and see what he measures. It's just about three pounds, so. Yes, sir. Good job, dude. Dang. I knew we'd hit up in this grass pocket here. Good size one, too. Day. Maybe he'll be big enough to go home. Hey guys, if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button. I hope to give you guys a lot more information on how to catch reds and trout and flounder in these different areas. Um, just a little uh, tidbit of information in this video, but if you guys would like to delve deeper into this whole inshore fishing, be sure to check out Salt Strong. They have a lot of really awesome classes all on their website. If you go check out fishstrong.com, they even sent me this inshore fishing manifesto book and it gives a lot of really cool tips and tricks and uh, even maps on how to figure out how to catch more fish in your area. So uh, be sure to check it out. They even have a 90-10 rule where you figure out that 90% of the fish are in 10% of the area and uh, really helps you guys. Be sure to go down in the description below and check out a link. If you guys click on that link, um, it really helps out the channel. I am a Salt Strong affiliate. Every click helps. And if you guys click on the link, you guys can get a brand new package of Salt Strong lures sent right to your house. Be sure to check out the membership and the subscription. You could get a 14 day free trial if you guys wanna check it out. And they have tons of classes and tons of courses on how to catch more redfish. And guess what? If you don't catch more redfish, they will give you your money back, which is just crazy. You guys be sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching Fish Good Milligan. We'll see you guys next time. And remember, if you don't catch fish, it's all good. You can always fish again. Peace.